free at last, the Kainuk siege finally ends as the roads are open. We must put all our politics, all our other differences aside and face squarely the challenge that face our country. And the government vows to pass the contentious security laws amendment bill. And you can see the goal is very deliberate. Return Kenya to the Nyayo state. Urgent it may be, necessary it may be, but there is no way that we can have legislation that violates the constitution. Rising opposition to the security bill as experts urge scrutiny of its specific clauses. And a unique ceremony of the graduation of thousands of Maasai Morans. Once again, thank you very much for joining us on KTN Weekend Prime. We begin in Kitale and Lodwa, where the Kitale-Lodwa road was this evening reopened following a more than 48-hour blockade. The road was closed by residents of Kainuk protesting the killing of three people by suspected Pokot bandits. The barricade left hundreds of people, uh, hundreds of travelers rather, stranded without food and water. A few kilometers from Kainuk, buses, trucks and other vehicles at a standstill. The traffic stretching for close to 10 kilometers, according to Red Cross officials. I think well, it was frustrated, angry, tired and hungry. The road was barricaded by local residents, angered by constant raids by suspected Pokot bandits. The protest was triggered by Friday's shooting of three people by suspected Pokot raiders who made away with dozens of cows and goats from the Kainuk common grazing grounds. <laughs> and not even the heavy presence of security personnel in the area could get the residents to back down. They were seeking an assurance over their security and an audience with President Uhuru Kenyatta or his deputy William Ruto. <laughs> Close to 1,000 travelers, including children, were left stranded. There is a person with, uh, with Puma who is traveling from Turkana uh, coming down to Italy for, for medicine, uh, for, for treatment. and. Uh, I think with the tension and uh, just the sheer frustration of sitting and waiting for the last 24 plus hours, uh, he wasn't very well. So this afternoon we decided to transport him to Italy where hopefully he'll get better medical care. The Kenya Red Cross moved in, providing milk, bread and water. Talks between local leaders including Trukana Senator John Munez and Trukana South MP James Lomanen and the County Security Committee led by the County Commissioner Julius Mathenge to try and end the blockade lasted several hours. At 5 p.m. Sunday, they reached a breakthrough, managing to convince the residents to open up the road. An uneasy calm, however, still prevails in the area. There have been constant conflicts between the Trukana and Pokot over a long-standing boundary dispute and a tussle over resource sharing. Rita Tinina, KTN. Deputy President William Ruto is asking the National Assembly to pass a controversial security bill which he claims will boost security in the country. This comes as a section of legislators allied to the Jubilee Coalition swore to pass the bill with or without amendments. Mercy Candier with that story from Wasingishu County. The legislators allied to the Jubilee Coalition vowed to sing one tune with regard to the security bill. We must have a paradigm shift, and that paradigm shift is in the amendment of the security legislation. Security bill to Kotayari Kupitisha. Kama wewe mwashimua deputy speaker Joyce Laboso unataka tuanzie hapa, tutanzia tuseme ae. The security amendment bill, ni wangapi pia wanasema munataka tupitisha kule bungeni, wanainchi kwanza. As many as of the opinion say aye. As many as of a contrary opinion say nay. Basi wabunge mumesikia. 
Deputy President William Ruto urged the members of parliament to shelve their political affiliations and prioritize the safety of Kenyans by passing the controversial security bill, insisting that the bill was not changing any part of the law but is focusing on the implementation of the legislation to secure the nation. We have not made any proposals for the amendment of our constitution. What we have made proposals on the amendment is just the amendment of legislation to make sure that that which is guaranteed by the constitution is operationalized by the law. Wabunge kupitisha hiyo mswada na kwa hiyo mswada pia muongeze serikali za county kwa maneno ya usalama. Hakuna Mungu kama wewe. Hakuna this even as clerics and political leaders prayed for the dissolution of the international criminal court cases hey, against him. Biblia imetuamrisha tukiwa raia tuombe viongozi wetu. Na leo tumeungana kuleta vyo, ma, maombi ya dua kwa viongozi wetu minyororo iondoa iondoke walete baraka kwetu. Wenye kukoroga kesi na witnesses ni moja. Tunataka tuulize Benzuda awachilie watu wote. Kama aliweza kuachilia watu waine watu wawili hawaishi kukubaki tunaambia Ben Suda my president my my vice president my asikie hivyo popote alipo the controversial bill seeks to have terror suspects detained for up to one year before persecution. Intelligence officers to possess firearms, tap mobile phone communication messages without authority from the court, and the media to seek consent from the police before publishing stories on terror and other massive crimes. They were speaking at a prayer meeting attended by elected leaders from across the political divide, religious leaders and residents of Tarbo constituency area of Wasangeshu County. Masikandia Kati and Tarbo, Wasangeshu County. Still on the Security Laws Amendment Bill, the Commission for the Implementation of the Constitution says it was not consulted in the drafting of the contentious Security Laws Amendment Bill. CIC Chairman Charles Nyachai says that they have warned the Executive and Parliament that the bill is unconstitutional. But where exactly does CIC find fault in the controversial bill? KTN's Asha Mwilu now reports. It's now caught the attention of global lobby groups. The proposed amendments bill to security laws has prompted Amnesty International and the Human Rights Watch to chime in. Both groups now urging lawmakers to reject the bill. While the executive shows no sign of blinking fast, the dissenting voices are also proving unrelenting. And you can see the goal is very deliberate. Return Kenya to the Nyayo state. Return Kenya to the Jomo state. Unasema sisi hatukubaliani nazo. Kwa hao waandikaji habari lazima wapewe uhuru wa kuinvestigate na kueleza wa Kenya ni nini kinaendelea ndani ya serikali. Chairperson of the Commission for the Implementation of the Constitution Charles Nyachai says the debate needs a more sober approach. We must draw a distinction between those provisions in the constitution in in in, in, in the uh, proposed uh, bill which are unconstitutional yeah and i've tried to give you uh, some examples we must draw a distinction between that and where parliament within the confines of the constitution is making uh, certain decisions Nyachai says that while many are basing their arguments against the amendments on the Bill of Rights, Article 24 of the Constitution states that a right or a fundamental freedom can be limited by law. This can, however, only be done if all relevant factors are taken into account. These are the nature of the right or freedom, importance of the purpose of limitation, the nature and extent of the limitation, the need to ensure that an individual's enjoyment of rights and freedoms doesn't prejudice the rights of others, and the relation between the limitation and its purpose, and whether there are less restrictive means to achieve the purpose. CIC is, however, concerned that some of the proposed amendments are going against this article. For instance, in proposed amendments to the National Intelligence Service Act, 
the Director General of NIS can authorize any of his members to obtain any information, material, record, document, or thing, and for that purpose, search any place or obtain access to anything, search for and make copies of anything, monitor communication, install, maintain, or remove anything, or do anything considered necessary to preserve national security. Nyachai argues that while this blanket provision in the proposed amendment limits the right to privacy, it does not explain the nature or extent of the limitation. Uh, you are creating an offense of publishing uh, uh, material that is obscene, that is um, uh, uh, offensive, that is gory. Now, I don't think if we asked any of us, we would probably have different ideas. Uh, of what is obscene, what is gory, what is uh, uh, offensive. In the Prevention of Terrorism Act, the bill proposes an amendment to limit media coverage of terrorism. It proposes that any person who without authorization from the National Police Service broadcasts any information which undermines investigations or security operations relating to terrorism commits an offense and is liable to either three years in jail, a fine of five million, or both. In this case, the nature and extent of limitation to freedom of the media and freedom of expression has not been clearly explained. Article 25 of the Constitution clearly stipulates the rights and freedoms that may not be limited in any circumstance. Those are freedom from torture and cruelty, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment, freedom from slavery and servitude, right to a fair trial, and right to have your detention justified in court. But in the Criminal Procedure Code, a proposed amendment gives the prosecution leeway to not disclose certain evidence on which it relies if that evidence, among other provisions, may facilitate the commission of other offenses or is sensitive and not in public interest. Nyachai says that if that amendment is approved by Parliament, it goes against the Constitution which guarantees an individual the absolute right to a fair trial. If the bill is published as is, uh, it, it clearly contains unconstitutional provisions and, and, and uh, we would have no choice but to seek uh, judicial intervention. With the controversies surrounding the Security Laws Amendments Bill, CIC wants Parliament to review some of the amendments on the floor of the House and warns that even the mere lack of proper public participation can render the bill unconstitutional. Ashamwilu, KTN, Nairobi. Now, as is the title of Asha Mwilu's story, the devil really is in the details with regards to the security laws amendment bill. That's because not only are there very many uh, clauses within, the, within some specific laws that, want, that should be amended or are proposed to be amended, there also are about 21 of the, uh, specific laws that uh, have been proposed to be amendment, amended. I'll just go through some of them. The Public Order Act, the Penal Code, the Extradition, Contiguous and Foreign Countries Act, the Criminal Procedure, Procedure Code, the Registration of Persons Act, the Evidence Act, the Prisons Act, the Firearms Act, the Radiation Protection Act, the Rent Restrictions Act, the Kenya Airports Authority Act, the Traffic Act, the Investment Pro Pro Promotion Act, beg your pardon, the Labor Institutions Act, the National Safety Transport, uh, the National Transport Safety Authority Act, beg your pardon, the Refugee Act, the National Intelligence Service Act, the Prevention of Terrorism Act, the Kenya Citizenship and Immigration Act, the National Police Service Act, and the Civil Aviation Act. These are some. These are all the laws that have proposed amendments to them. But specific to the laws that a number of people are having problems with, are uh, about six of them. That's the Public Order Act, the Criminal Procedure Act, the Evidence Act, the National Intelligence Service Act, National Police Service Act, and of course the Prevention of Tra Terrorism Act. This is a discussion we're going to be having, like I mentioned earlier, and you can participate in this discussion. The hashtag is hashtag Checkpoint. We will be having Muldoni we also have Abdikadir Omar Aden uh, from Balambala constituency, as well as Kimani Yeshumwa from Kikuyu constituency, propose, uh, a man who has proposed this on the floor of the house. Now, moving on, um, the Maasai or Noto ceremony marks the end of one's age set period of active junior warhood and also marks the promotion to junior elders or senior warriors. Now, our KC correspondent, Fred Moturi, brings you the details of this colorful event. Hello, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. 
The ceremony entitled the Moran to take wives and raise families. Although for the married group, it also marks the end of their junior life, making them decision makers of matters affecting the whole community. It is truly a ceremony full of color, attended by the young and old from the Wasingishu clan in Transmara, one that occurs only once every 10 to 15 years. The Maasai graduating warriors are dressed in a red cloth, wrapped around their waist, or sometimes slung across the shoulders. In one hand they hold a long stick, referred to as ilum. They have bald heads, on which a mixture of ochre and fat has been applied in a systematic way. The age set is a unique social structure in which Maasai of a similar age are grouped together. Kwa mila ya kimasai, tuko na rika. Kila rika ni watu, maybe range yao ya miaka ni kama kwa metofautia na labda kwanzia miaka tano mbaka kumi. Women automatically assume membership of the age set of their husbands. E, awa wake ambao umeona wakishiriki ni wake wetu. Kila mwana ume leo ama kila morani anakuja na mke wake. The age set has formed is a permanent grouping lasting throughout the life of its members. Yani tumefuka kutoka ngazi ya utoto sasa si ni watu wasima. Mzee amekuwa mzee sasa si kijana tena. Na mimi pia sasa ni mama. Maana yake mimi ni mke wake. Hawezi kuwa mzee na mimi nibaki msichana. But before this ceremony is performed, boys and men between the ages of 12 and 25 are separated from the previous age set and go through a morata, a circumcision rite of passage and they must remain in black attire for between four and eight months. These young men will live in a manyata built by their mothers. Warriors perform the jumping dance referred to as adumu. This dance helps determine a warrior by testing their strength and endurance and of course to impress young girls or their girlfriends referred to as intoye. As per the tradition, all the songs consist of rhythms. While an Oloronyani, the song leader sings the melody and the chorus is provided by vocalists singing while emphasizing on a subject matter and the song is repeated word for word as it progresses. However, the culture has some change and the Morans no longer spend their days beyond the boundaries wandering Maasai lands or engaging in cattle stealing. That is the clear cut between us that we support those cultural practices which are not retrogressive, which do not impact negatively on education and, other, and, and our tradition. Even though we are digital, but our culture is more, than, is more than digital. What remains for these Morans is to observe strict discipline. To be united as Kenyans. After the dance, the entire group of about 3,000 men walked around 500 meters to the new site for oath taking. Indeed, it was a colorful ceremony that showed a unique way of preserving a beautiful culture. Fred Moturi, KTN in Transmara. I like that soundbite. Culture is more than digital. I believe that GEMS are also having a similar ceremony around this time. Now let's move on to studies that have indicated that 83% of women and girls have reported one or more episodes of abuse. It is figures such as these that have prompted the launch of a marathon intended to raise funds against gender violence, dubbed the Genderthon. The inaugural race was flagged off by Chief Justice Willie Mutunga. It comes hot on the heels of widespread protests against men who have violently stripped women in the streets. While the Sexual Offences Act and the Constitution expressly outlawed sexual violence, the provisions of the law are largely seen to be abstract and thus hardly deterrent. In fact, one of the laws that are proposed uh, in the Security Laws Amendment Bill addresses the subject of stripping or degrading the nature of women in public. That's a subject we're going to be discussing right after the break on Checkpoint, the Security Laws Amendment Bill. Is it good? Is it bad? Which of the 22 um, laws that are to be proposed, and I, I forgot one, by the way, that's a Public Benefits Organizations Act, uh, which of these laws have some good and which laws need addressing in Parliament next week? That discussion coming up right after the break on Checkpoint point stay with us
Just ahead on Checkpoint, the good and the ugly in the Security Laws Amendment Bill, coming up on Checkpoint. You are watching KTN Weekend Prime. Welcome back to KTN Weekend Prime and as promised we are having that discussion that has got many people talking especially regarding the future in terms of securing Kenya uh, today with these proposed amendments. I'll just go through these amendments once more so that we can know what specific laws have amendments or proposed amendments attached to them and the first one of course is a public order act and we've got the penal code coming second the Extradi extradition contiguous and foreign countries act the criminal procedure act uh, pr criminal procedure code the registration of persons act the evidence act we've also got the prisons act the firearms act the radiation protection act the Rent Restrictions Act, the Kenya Airports Authority Act, the Traffic Act, the Investment Promotion Act, the Labor Institutions Act, the National Transport Safety Authority Act, the Refugees Act, the National Intelligence Service Act, the Prevention of Terrorism Act. We've also got the Kenya Citizenship and Immigration Act, the National Police Service Act, the Civil Aviation Act and the Public Benefit Organization Act. That one's not on the wall there, but it, it is part of the memorandum that is uh, up for, for uh, amendment. And in studio to discuss this, we, like I mentioned, have got three guests who know quite, about, uh, quite a lot about these acts. Sitting right next to me here is a member of parliament for Kikuyu, Mr. Kimani Ishungwa. Thank you very much for joining us. Right next to him is Abdikadir Aden. He's a member of parliament for Balambala, constituency in Garissa County. And Thank right you. at the far end, we've got Modoni Wanyaki from Amnesty International Regional Director. Thank you very much for joining us tonight, uh, Modoni. Now, I'll start with you, Kimani, because you are among the people who are proposing that this bill be passed with amendments or without. Let's just start there. With amendments or without? Well, uh, it wouldn't be for me to say whether with or without amendments. Do you think that there should be amendments? I, I am not bringing any amendments to the bill myself. Probably any one of the other 349 members of parliament can bring an amendment. Yeah. And uh, depending on the merits and the merits of that amendment, mm -hmm. uh, would support or not support depending on the gist of the amendment. Okay, a lot of the people who are asking for amendments or the shelving of the bill altogether say that, number one, it is... It is almost a direct attack on the Bill of Rights, specifically rights like uh, rights to fair trial, privacy rights, uh, rights from uh, freedom from torture, for instance, with, uh, with uh, the Prevention of Terrorism Act. Those kinds of rights um, are directly being affected. Why aren't you looking at this and, and thinking about it within that wider context? Oh, oh, well, my very plain reading of the amendments that have been proposed uh, in all the acts that are being touched on, I have not seen a single amendment that uh, is an affront on the Bill of Rights as it is in the current constitution. And therefore, I, for me, I have seen a lot of politicking, unnecessary politicking. All right, let me give you an example of one that uh, a lot of people have read, um, apart from the ones that affect us. Let me start with the NIS Act, where upon the orders of the Director General, in, in covert operations, uh, members or officers from the NIS can pretty much do anything, record anything, get any information, or do anything. In fact, the word anything is repeated about four times in that act in the pursuance of, um, of their objectives in the prevention of, uh, of, nas of national security threats. Doesn't that sound to you like something that is a far, far too general to not attack the Bill of Rights? I, I think we, we are simply stretching our imagination too far. But I think in covert operations, basically, is in operations that have got to do everything with securing our, our country. Uh, and really, uh, the reading of uh, the, the literal meaning of anything, uh, to me, would be someone stretching your imagination too far. Uh, and you've got to interpret the, the amendment uh, or, or the proposed amendment in the context in which uh, it is proposed. But that's just it. It's not interpreted. It's far too general with anything being the word that that is left there with regards to what exactly the, the mandate of officers are. I'm, I'm avoiding going into the specifics because I'm not, I, I, I lack the benefit of reading what you are reading unless I yeah. uh, consult my... All right, we'll bring it up on the wall just yeah, now yes, so that everybody can have the benefit. But let me move on to you, uh, Buona uh, Aden. Um, same question. What specifically for you are the amendments that need to be brought to the security laws amendment bill? Uh, thanks, John Allen. I think uh, 
In my view, on the onset, I will say that this is a bill that uh, is a direct onslaught on the Bill of Rights, uh, as it is in the Constitution. Uh, indeed, it's unfortunate that this bill is, see, is seeing this level of Parliament, a level of, uh, I mean, third reading. This bill should have died uh, right after it was on the floor of the House, because uh, this particular bill, right beginning from Clause 5, which is probably the main substantive clause, right on there, it, does, it doesn't, my colleague doesn't need to go very far, it starts the onslaught on, on, on free assembly, for example, whereby um, Kenyans have fought very hard for very many years to gain the freedom for them to be able to express themselves as they so wish, uh, to go out there and assemble as they wish. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, that particular clause, which is the beginning clause, starts with an onslaught on, uh, which is protected under the Bill of Rights and uh, denies Kenyans that freedom now, whereby now the Cabinet Secretary, which is the executive now, needs to give that license for them to go and do their free assembly, whereby even the place where they will assemble, even the time when they will assemble, all these issues are prescribed, just like doctors prescribe medicine. Yeah. So this is, uh, again, uh, an issue that really uh, uh, cuts on our freedom. And all right, I think that's all right. right. Mudhoni, um, Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch are, um, are looking for at least amendments or the shelving of the bill uh, specifically? Well, we would like it shelved so that due process, constitutional process, can be followed in the first instance with regards to the need for public participation uh, in general, but also with regards to the need that if any amendments are to be made to the Bill of Rights, the Constitution requires a referendum. This substantially affects the Bill of Rights rights of privacy, rights of assembly and association, rights of expression, right to information, um, and this is no, these are not minor changes to sort of tidy up the sort of security architecture or make it easier for the security services to do their work. They are far-reaching mm -hmm. and substantial, and like uh, the colleague here has said, um, take us back in terms of many of the reasons that the security services were designed the way they were under the new constitutional true, dispensation. True, but there are 22 laws that are being amended. Are there any amendments that you agree with having read through these amendments? Some of them are harmless, but the ones that are not harmless are so significant that they do require, like I said, in general, the right to public participation yeah. and substantively uh, the right to a referendum if the Bill of Rights is to be limited in the way that it proposes that it is. All right. Kimani, you had wanted to chime in with respect to, the, to, to these arguments. Uh, definitely, starting with what uh, my colleague here said uh, in terms of the right to assemble. Yeah. And, and I think the amendment that is proposed in Clause 5, as is mentioned, uh, does not in any way negate the provisions that are there currently there in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And I think it only says if any person who unlawfully convenes, organizes, or promotes a public rally meeting yep. or procession or neglects or refuses to comply with any law relating to public meetings commit an offense, mm -hmm. it's anybody who c contravenes the laws that are already there. Uh, and therefore, the new provision of, of uh, 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 creating areas where you can hold processions and demonstrations, I think that is a practice of the world over there are so many other countries, but in civilized democracies where people say, and I think it's only in line with, uh, I think, Article 24 of the Constitution, which says that if you are to enjoy your fundamental rights and freedoms, it should not be at the expense of others enjoying their own fundamental rights and freedoms. And I think what we have seen in the history of this country is people calling for demonstrations and what they call mass action, which to me in most cases appears to be mass looting and mass killings, mm -hmm. and at the expense of other people's fundamental rights and freedoms. And we're only saying if you want to hold a procession or a demonstration in town today, for instance, do not come and demonstrate outside the Standard Group Center. If the Standard Group Center wants to continue their day-to-day -day business, let them continue. Let us give you some space probably around Mlolongo and you can I hold think, your procession. I think quite there. a number of... The other thing uh, uh, yeah. I, I would want to, 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 to tackle is... Uh, the question on, uh, I, I, I don't know, uh, there's something, uh, it has kept my mind something Vani said. Yeah. Uh, as, as you remember, let me just, let me just ask you this. Um, with respect to the, uh, the Public Order Act, if the provisions are already in the law, and this is something that a number of people have been saying, if the law is already robust enough, why write another law to enforce the laws that are already there? I think we, we are saying the laws are already there in terms of who can convene a meeting and when and how you uh, convene that. Those laws are already there. Okay. The only right now is that you, we want to give the minister 
powers to gazette areas where you can hold such demonstrations, processions and meetings. Yeah. And I think it's only tidying up our, uh, you know, a law and order in this country so that we, we preempt situations where people hold demonstrations. And you remember, I'll take you back to just uh, Saba Saba this year where literally the economy of this country was brought, uh, in Nairobi at least, uh, people did not go to work because of fear of what was called mass action and mass demonstrations. Yes. And we only want to safeguard everybody's rights. If I am not party, for instance, to the mass action and demonstrations that our colleagues are calling for, which to me are necessary, let me be able to continue enjoying my fundamental rights and freedoms. All right, but here's another law that, um, that, that um, a number of people have been raising issues about, uh, the Criminal Procedure Code. And Section 42A, subsection 2 says, prosecution may not disclose certain evidence on which it intends to rely if the evidence may facilitate commission of other offenses, if the evidence is sensitive and not in the public interest to disclose or see uh, where there are grounds to believe that disclosing such evidence might lead to an attempt to being improperly made to pursue a witness or to make a statement retracting his original statement to change his story or not to appear in court or otherwise intimidate him. Why would you deny the right, uh, uh, an accused person the right to see the evidence that you have against them? I, I, I think for me really, John, that's uh, truly common sense. If honestly... Uh, <laughs> I am a suspect and uh, giving me certain information will be prejudicial to the investigations of the case on the part of the prosecution. Uh, I think we should allow, and this is in relation more so with terrorism. All right, let me give you an example in terms of terrorism. In, yes. 20, in 2010, there are a number of Kenyans, about 10 of them, who were renditioned across the border to Uganda. And they claimed that they had been tortured, but their original statements didn't say that. So now, if they are denied certain, uh, certain evidence um, on, with respect to the, the having been tortured and needing to change that statement later on in court, isn't that prejudicial to their own rights? Who would be giving them evidence in terms of being tortured? The uh, evidence of, the, of torture should uh, actually come from them. But the, you the, are people, the, one claiming who, to have been the people who are claiming to, to have tortured often are agents of the state. 1980s, and you would, Nyayo, and you Nyayo would expect, House, we know, you would we know the story. Someone there, is right? the one torturing you to adduce evidence yeah. that you, uh, indeed I tortured this person. All right, Mulan, you want to jump in? I just think it's unfortunate that our colleague doesn't seem to understand what fair trial standards are. These are standards that are endorsed by the African Union under the new guidelines on pretrial detention, on fair trial. It is criminal procedure around the world that a suspect has the right to every piece of evidence mm -hmm. um, that the prosecution holds uh, uh, against them. The burden of proof, proving the, the crime, is the burden is on the prosecution. Any accused person has the right to the full scope of evidence against them so that they can raise their case. This is yeah. normal procedure yeah. everywhere around the world and, and protected in African norms and standards, as well as international norms and standards, yeah. let alone our own constitution. All right. And I think John, John yeah. Alam, I think, uh, again, we are stretching our imagination too far, because we're not saying that every other accused person will be denied uh, what would be evidence to them. We're only saying that if that, uh, whatever information you want will be prejudicial to, to, to the case or, or ongoing investigations, then the prosecution has that right and that recourse in law to go to court and show cause as to why they cannot adduce that evidence to you. And we're not saying it's, it's blanket condemnation that everybody will be denied. If uh, the prosecution has, has, has their case, they have their case for denying you that information, yeah. if it will be prejudicial, and especially so, uh, and I would really uh, plead with my colleagues, especially when it touches on human life and the loss of human life uh, in acts of terrorism because these are the basic uh, simple things that we are confronted with in this country today that you will divulge information to a suspect probably of investigations that are ongoing prejudice other people's lives and we're right. saying you have that opportunity in court to be able to argue out your case as a prosecutor that if I give this evidence to John Alan Namu, it will be prejudicial. And the, the suspect also has the, the opportunity in court 
Therefore, there are, nobody there is being are, denied any rights. But there are, like Mothoni had mentioned, norms that, that we have abided by for a number of, of, of years. For instance, the declarations that we have signed, the UN declarations that uh, we have signed in terms uh, of uh, torture, I, I, and those I kind think, of things yeah. think, could think be really prejudicial. Just let, let's, let's, and, give, and, let's give up the career a chance before, yes, before we come uh, back. Jonathan, thank you. And I think, um, yeah, as, as my colleague here the, has, has said, uh, the issue of fair trial is protected under, under the Constitution. So all that that we are saying about the evidence being made available to the, vic to, to, to the person being, uh, being uh, prosecuted is a right enshrined in the Constitution. In addition to the other, um, um, to the other laws that Kenya um, uh, abides to. So I just want to move on from, from, from that one because I think Modoni has fairly but, but actually to that one. Before, before you move on, he, yeah. he actually does make a point with regards to terrorism yes. in that the, the nature of the crime of terrorism is such that Aside of, from it being emotional, there are certain m ways in which perhaps terrorists communicate that if, um, for instance, a prosecutor had evidence in court of, and I'm just uh, hypothesizing yes. here, and publicized it, that perhaps could be, could be passed along to other um, terrorists outside of the courtroom in terms of encoded messaging, you that know, kind of thing. You know what there are, there what are judicial safeguards on any kind of trial, including trials for organized crime such as terrorist mm -hmm. acts. Yeah. Um, judicial safeguards and judicial procedure would allow for uh, information of the kind that he said that may be damaging yeah. to be disclosed, but to be disclosed uh, under to, certain to under circumstances yeah. or to in front of a judge or, or under certain yeah. conditions and so on. There's nothing that is extra needed to deny the right of disclosure. Yeah. And one of the sub clauses that we are concerned about as Amnesty, as all the colleagues within the human rights movement, is that it says any other justifiable cause. Now what's justifiable? Mm -hmm. um, and again it brings up the issue of the way in which some of these amendments have phrased are so broad mm -hmm. that one can imagine complete abuse um, if they were to... to Kim 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 Mani, yeah. I think that's something that we need um, to address yeah. because um, at least in these six, in these six laws and, and also in, in quite a number, the, there is a, a number of people have argued a lack of specificity. Like I'll go back to the NIS Act the word anything really especially uh, in the context of I'm, where I'm, Kenya I'm, has come I'm from can mean anything yeah. I'm glad I'm glad uh, uh, John Allen that uh, Modoni is actually using the word uh, imaginable because it, that, that's all it is imaginable but it's not really and a think, stretch I, considering I, I, I where we've come from Kimani yeah. and I think that's, I think, that's something I think, that we I need think, to accept uh, it's only that uh, we are only uh, trying to judge where we are going based on where we're coming from. And I think uh, the president did put it very clearly on Jamhuri Day, that if there's anything imaginable, as they put it, mm -hmm. that you imagine it would be overstretched by anybody, I think it's only right for them to propose the amendments that they will bring to the floor of the House. Yeah. And I think what I have been very particular on is the continuous politization uh, po of this issue. And we are all reading politics and nothing else into it. And I think I, I am waiting for Thursday this week to see what amendments Amnesty International and all the, all the other civil society organizations, including the media, who, who, who uh, as some of you have also uh, gone overboard mm -hmm. in mutilating what is actually not in the, the, the proposed amendment. Uh, and of course, even our colleagues and uh, the president also did tell them, yeah. other than shouting about them out here, let us propose amendments. If you want anything specific, Please bring the amendment. All we right. are open to that debate. I think Abdikadir has something to say yes, about this uh, before let, we move Let me on. say that uh, I, I don't think my colleagues in Jubilee have any appetite to, to do any amendments. As he said earlier, uh, that uh, he himself will not, will not be bothered to suggest any. And I think what I just wanted to say, uh, John, is uh, the issue of NIS director giving the authority to an individual. Absolute authority to an individual to go and do literally anything. And the last uh, point there says, do anything that he thinks is of the interest of the national interest. What is this anything? Is it, is it, is it extrajudicial killing? Is it uh, torture? But I think the point, that, it, the point that Kimani is making that it's not, the onus isn't just on the people who are proposing the bill, but also you who are not supporting this bill to provide specificity in we, that yes. we have we have we have done that in the various stages of the bill that has been going through we will continue to do so of course we've got a fight to do on thursday on in terms of amendments to ensure that 
first of all, all unconstitutional issues, which um, I'm glad the chairman of uh, CIC has pointed out that there are a number of, as we have pointed out, a number of... But is of there a raft uh, of, of proposals uh, that ODM yes, is bringing? We'll, we will bring we will bring raft of proposals as ourselves, as individual members of parliament. Okay. Uh, that, is, that, that, that is a fact. But let me say this. Excellent. There is no way that uh, we can... It, the fight against terrorism is not being won, not because there are not enough laws. It is because we do not have systems which are good enough, perfect enough to fight this. We've All got right. serious corruption and problems and lack of structure and lack of functioning within our security system. These are the issues that are causing uh, um, um, the terrorism issues. All right, let's, let's move on to Modoni first. Make, let, let Modoni, you can Just make your point on that with respect to specificity, but um, um, Abdikadi raises a very interesting point with respect to the situation that we are in now. Was there a lacuna in the laws that caused Mpeketoni or Westgate? No. And no, and I think in a way it would have been good if we had started the conversation there. Because if we look at sort of uh, the reports that have been done on recent security operations, so you look for instance at the report of the Independent Police Oversight Authority on the operation Mpeketoni, you look at the recent International Crisis Group report on operations generally from Mpeketoni to Capedo to easily to uh, Mandera. The commentary is the same. There is a lack of coordination between agencies and specifically the flow through of intelligence into operational units. There's a lack of coordination between operational units on the ground and headquarters. Um, and then of course there are the questions of violations that are committed during every single operation that we've seen. The proposals of now, this bill. Now yeah. how, one asks, how do these proposals relate to those questions? And right. I think that's where we needed yeah, to I think begin. Proposals, they of, do this not. Bill, yeah. proposals they do of this not. bill would look at the National Counterterrorism Center as exactly. being an, a panacea, for instance, to the lack of coordination of, on the ground. But it is a, a very interesting question that has been raised. There hasn't been a lack in the law when, when Westgate happened. It really wasn't because we lacked the laws to fight terrorism. This, was, think, uh, this was a year after the prevention of I terrorism. I think John Allen, uh, 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 and uh, before I come to the Westgate issue, because I think it was quite clear, and uh, you are one of the people who thoroughly covered that uh, Westgate saga, and there was clearly lack of coordination between the military, the police, and the intelligence services. Yeah. And I think those are part of the amendments that we seek to cure. Uh, some of the lacunas that we, we seek to cure with the Counterterrorism Coordination Center, yes. where even at the airport, uh, at our uh, air, uh, airports, the JKA, Mombasa, and uh, anywhere else, you will have a Counterterrorism Coordination Unit. Uh, and I think uh, that will be cured. But I wanted to take you back to your anything thing, because I, I, I've actually uh, found it. Yes. And he says that the Director General on the written authority to uh, as, uh, as a member of the service may authorize any member of the service to obtain any information, material, record, yes. document, or thing, and for that purpose, enter any place or obtain access to anything. Yes. Of course, uh, simple reading of that sentence is and, obtain and, and material, and right material that would help that service person. And right at the end of that sentence, yes. there is install, scario. maintain, yes. or remove anything, mm -hmm. or do anything. Or do anything at the end. Or right. do anything considered necessary and to it is preserve what is this national anything? security. And, it, and there and are two issues that if people if have there. Number one, it is that without oversight, it is one person who is making that decision yes. in written in written form. And secondly, the phrase anything. But I, I think before I, I think before, uh, before I, why, why I said John and right. allow me why I said you are overstretching your imagination. Okay, uh, you you cannot read that one sentence in isolation. I, I'm not a lawyer. Madoni is a better lawyer than me. All right, uh, let's swing I'm it over to, to but I want to tell you. You cannot, you cannot interpret that to mean that the, the officer is supposed to do anything to anyone is in relation to obtaining what he has been directed to obtain in writing. For okay. instance, if an intelligence officer is directed, go into John Allen's NAMU, look for this particular information, he will obtain anything that will help him. He will do anything, including using force to get into your house, but not uh, uh, the, the overstretched mind of extrajudicial killings. And I think that is why the amendment says the instructions will be in writing. Yes, from, from the director I, general. From the director one general. One individual. Yes. Yeah. 
All right. Anyway, I think we need to look at our history. Yeah. There are very clear reasons that when Special Grants was being redesigned under to become NSIS to now uh, NIS, there were very clear reasons that its rights of stop and search, its rights of detention were removed because those powers had been abused. Yeah. Um, and that is the fear that we are seeing here. Right now, in terms of the powers given to NSI, uh, NIS, they actually have the right to surveil um, intercept communications without judicial warrant. Correct. Judicial safeguards have been removed in such a range of, of situations throughout the bill. One worries about the kind of powers and, and the kind of abuse of powers that we'll see, especially because we have not yet dealt with the accountability question of any of our security services. Okay. Abuses are committed on an almost daily basis. Nothing happens. Well, uh, Kimani, let's... L let's be honest here. Yes. Do you think that our security services, and you'll jump in just in, in, in a moment, Abdikara, do you think our security services are at the level if, given this law, they will abide by it by the letter, given the history that we have with respect to our security services? Uh, John, you've known me for many years. I'm a very honest Kenyan. Yes. And I'll tell you honestly, we, you cannot judge all our security forces. There are a few rotten elements. And in any society, even in most developed democracies, there are certain rotten elements. However, the safeguards you get are constitutional safeguards. Mm -hmm. And I think our 2010 constitution has been very, is actually very strong on the constitutional safeguards. For instance, in the past, and I, I, I appreciate where they're coming from, uh, because we, we, we've all been in this country during the times of the special branch in the, in the Moy era and what used to happen. But I think it can never be in this country that you get arrested by a, an intelligence officer because we, are now, we want now to give them powers to arrest criminals and for uh, for sure if i am not a criminal i should have no fear of intelligence officers it's criminals who should have fear yeah. but again the constitutional safeguard that is there uh, because we are stretching our imagination that we go back to the nyayo house and nyati house uh, dark chambers the constitutional safeguard is that you cannot be detained by either an intelligence officer or a police officer beyond is it 24 48 hours actually the, the bill yeah. 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 is yeah. 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 the extension of that to 90 days correct within within changing it yes they're changing the period they, they now. are changing it that if there is reason to hold kimani shongwa in remand for more than 24 hours, All right. you go to court. You will never be detained, not in Kenya again. Okay. It will never happen. Kibani. Therefore, let us not use uh, uh, fear. Uh, try to instill fear in our people. And, uh, you know, fight something that in the long run is in the best interest of every other Kenyan, including our colleagues in court and those in the civil society. Abdikari, let's come back to you with respect to what, what, what Kimani said. You have a number of points made. Clearly, clearly there's a reason why, I wanted to say, clearly there's a reason why Kenyans designed the Bill of Rights as it is now. And, and, and also in addition to that, there's a reason why we wanted to have, under the new constitution, the, the independent police service, whereby the IG, the process of hiring and firing of the IG was decided by the Kenyan people. Mm -hmm. The issues that we have now is that the fundamental issues being picked in this bill are so enormous that indeed it amounts to mutilation of, of Chapter 4. And that, under Article 255 of the Constitution, says if that kind of large number of amendments are to be done, then it can only be done through a constitutional referendum. I mean, uh, through, through a referendum. I want to say that this giving too much authority to individuals without accountability, denying Kenyans the way they want to enjoy their rights of even media, free media. But wait, tell but me. With respect, to with, respect, with respect to that, and we'll get to that in yes. a moment, there has been massive complaints from members of the public that when, um, uh, when uh, terrorist uh, um, attacks occur, yes. the president is asked to be accountable in terms exactly. of abrading the, the people who are beneath him. For instance, the inspector general, the director general. This, uh, these uh, proposals seek to give the president teeth in, in hiring and firing. Why do you have a problem with that? Clearly, there are constitutional, and the constitutional experts in this country have voiced that during the time when there was that vacuum. Yes. They say that there is no co constitutional obstacle for the president to suggest the removal of the IG. He can start kickstart that process, and with, assemb with, with, with the National Assembly, that process can be done. It is, just, it is just what we want to do is that we are now going back to the era whereby the head of state 
will hire and fire the IG, the police, the, the, the police. In other words, literally take the police in his hands. I want to talk about the issue of the free media. Yeah. What happened in Westgate? If Kenyans did not have the opportunity to see, thanks to the media, which reported to us, you saw how Kenyans enjoyed that, loved that, to the extent that they were literally taking coffee to some of the journalists who were covering that. Why? Because we appreciated, we were informed as, as, as a nation. Imagine if we were put in the dark completely. That All is right. what this law is going to do. Actually, well, as a John, that, that, that's, that's what this okay. law is as going to do. As a How writer, as a, to, as that a writer to that... Um, and, and I want to say also, yeah. sorry, as and when uh, you give a person a responsibility to go and do something, do not forget that this act talks of covert operation. I have researched on that meaning of that covert operation. A covert operation under the, 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 the best defined, which is the American uh, intelligence system, yeah. is an operation whereby there is the person sending, giving the authority, the person, the officer conducting that particular operation remains anonymous. In other words, something can happen in my town in Garissa tomorrow under that covert operation, and every authority in this government denies. And All people right. have been killed, lives have been lost, this covert operation thing is is going to bring torture back into this country. Okay. I can tell you, General Alam, if this particular bill comes on, Nyayo Chambers, these guys may as well start renovating Nyayo, <laughs> Nyayo Chambers because okay. certainly they are going to take customers. Uh, there. All right, all right. John, now, John. now, unfortunately, we are running out of time uh, at this point. But uh, Mudoni, I'll, I'll ask you to chime in with respect to um, what Kimani was saying, and and you had a, a, a number of points on the same. I just uh, I wanted to come back to the question about this being a fundamental redesign of the setup of uh, security institutions that was envisaged under the Constitution. He's right. What the net effect of some of the proposals uh, in this list of amendments is to put direct control back in the hands of the presidency and away from the public and away from independent oversight bodies mm -hmm. like the National Police Service Commission, like IPOA, um, like uh, the vetting, public uh, participation in vetting. Mm. The DG would be hired directly by the presidency. The, although that's not so direct when it comes to the inspector of police, yeah. um, there is the removal of the public vetting, there's the removal of the role of the Senate. Um, that is not what we want. We do not want coordination that is essentially encapsulated in the person of the presidency. We want coordination across the agencies according to their mandate. Do you think that this, this time that Kenya is in, this period that Kenya is in, where it is facing what it has been called an insurgency, um, is is reason enough to be able to uh, put power back in the hands of the no. person who people appointed by their votes? Not in this kind of manner in any way, shape or form. Yeah. I think what we have been waiting for from the executive is a plan that deals with the drivers of terrorist attacks and not just sort of this kind of heavy handed um, approach in terms of operations when something goes wrong. All right. Okay. Grievance uh, has not been addressed. All of these transitional justice issues are still pending that drive people into into committing these kind of crimes. All right. well, and I want to say that uh, I, I come from a region in northern Kenya, and generally even in the coast, whereby we have suffered historical um, punishments, collateral punishments. Talk of the Wagala massacres, the Garissa massacres of the 1980. And before uh, you continue, there are quite a number of terror. In fact, the, the burden of terrorism has been most in the northeastern yes. region. Why is it, though, that uh, members of parliament from that region aren't making their own proposals prior to, prior to um, uh, the proposals coming from government as you wind up. Right, we are working, uh, we, we are working on that, but our, the point I wanted to, to make is that in that region of northern Kenya and coastal region, where we have seen under the previous regimes, under similar laws, there was punishment, heavy-handed punishments. The people in these two regions are right now very alarmed and panicking. Panicking because when these laws come back, what we are very sure is that because we are one victims of terror ourselves most of the terror is happening in my hometown it's happening in the coastal region of Kenya so whenever something happens whether it is trauma or loss of life there is indeed people from that region who are also um, in, in involved this particular laws I can tell you there is an indication that it is going back to that region and the region that is going take it from me today the two regions which is going to be most hit by these particular laws, particularly the covert operations, particularly those issues targeting the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the cancellations of, uh, um, of, 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 of citizenship and all this. 
We are living in a county, Garissa County. We are 400,000 in population. We are hosting 600,000 refugees. When this government says and there is, refugees and there is a proposal act, to unfortunately, reduce yes, that to unfortunately, I have spoken extensively on that issue as yeah. well. But when this government says it's going to take on the refugee issue head on, for example, going to catch them to do this, to do that, we are a minority, the Kenyan Somali citizens in Garissa, for example, county. And I'm just taking that as an example. All right, in that, you're going to have to wind up now. Yeah. The collateral damage which is going to happen to the common citizen it is going to be so punitive and under a law which does not take this officer who is doing into any account, who can go into any place, including my own house, including to the, to the churches, mosques, and even install CCTVs and cameras, even in our own houses. Take away literally everything. Looting is not going to be... This cannot be ruled out okay. on, a, on a force, police force, All right. that consistently, whether it is an international so report or local reports uh, that decided, have shown is okay. very corrupt. Fine, fine. Point, point made. Let's go to you, uh, Kimani. As you wind up, I know you have quite a number of issues. Let's, let's try and get through them as, as quickly as we can. Actually, mine will be very simple. I yeah. think uh, listening to my two colleagues, especially my, my good friend Adam here, uh, they're dwelling on generalities and imaginations. And I have not heard them point on anything specific even in that Bill of Rights uh, th that uh, is being contradicted by any particular amendment. I think the right to privacy. I can be able to point to all of them. He's stretching his imagination okay. when he says that point. you're going yeah. to install yes, CCTV yes. cameras in people's homes. Yes. And I think all that government seeks to do is to get to know whether Aden and his colleagues are with us and the rest of Kenyans or they are working with the Taliban. All right, as you, as you, as you wind up, when, Kimani, when, in fact, when that's, John, that's a, John that's a good way to, to wind up. Let me, let with me us or against when, us. when you make yeah. proposals to be able to know what is happening inside mosques and churches, because it has been clear that people are hiding arms that are killing Kenyans in places of worship, and this is what these amendments are talking about. And I think there is nothing uh, imaginable like they, they want to stretch their imagination. Wonderful. And they want to thrive on instilling fear and intimidating Kenyans. Right. And I want to encourage Kenyans to support the government okay. to deal we really decisively okay. with we the question of, of terrorism All right. and insecurity in this country. And I think the president put it very well. These are not ordinary times. These are extraordinary, extraordinary times that need times. extraordinary measures. Right. And we cannot have our cake and eat it at the same time. Okay. Either you are with Kenyans in fighting terrorism and crime in this country, or you are actually with the terrorists. Okay. It's as simple as that. For all right, Kimani, it's thank you very much. It's actually not that uh, simple. We are yeah. pro human rights. We are pro the human rights of all Kenyans, all including sentence. the security of all Kenyans. Including we want the security terrorists. to be dealt with in a manner that is appropriate and constitutional. Okay, fine. I'm, I'm sorry, Abdikari. We, we, okay. we can't. You're going to have your time in, in the <laughs> National <laughs> Assembly and uh, right. to be able to to, to elucidate I'll, I'll your points. Uh, Kimani, of what course, amendments. that discussion yes, will be going on. Let's hope there are some amendments that are brought and that that. The political noise. And that the proposers <laughs> of, this of this bill will be open uh, to amendments that seek to help all Kenyans. Thank you very much for joining us, Kimani Yeshungwa, as well as Abdi Kadir Aden and Muloni Wanyeki. We're going to keep on and keep at this discussion, we promise here at KTN, until Kenyans feel fully uh, fully addressed and fully, fully educated on this issue. Right now, Checkpoint has to take a short break. We'll be back with the rest of the news on KTN Weekend Prime. Right away from hard tackle now. Now Kenya turned 51 last Friday and the ceremony came uh, with lots of singing and dancing. But tonight on Mock the Week, Jerry Mushura tells us why to some people dancing is not what you or I know as a coordination of movement to some music. She also tells us why we should always listen to our elders. and welcome to Mock the Week. My name is Jerry Muchura and as you can see, I am still sitting in for Wilson Borough who I now understand has left the civil service to join the GSU. Why? Because apparently the GSU are much more fun. Speaking of dancing, it was a week to sing, dance and celebrate Kenya's steady journey into old age as the country marked 51 years of independence which coincidentally also marked the onset of midlife crisis. In fact, this was such an exciting news that the president found himself belting out tunes of joy to his mother country.
Still, he remembered that singing is not exactly his strongest point. Remember his audition for Project Fame? This is my story. This is my song. Yeah, my advice, Mr. President, stick to presidenting. For instance... Hmm, well, I think you can do that as well. Which reminds me, this almost sounds like I've heard this before. Yes, it would seem that finally number four had learned from number three on how to make people more attentive to his speeches. Wait a minute. Remember this? Well, that explains everything, doesn't it? Still on the Jamuhuri Day celebrations, there's a region called Embu, and these fellows had a different idea on what the Jamuhuri Day celebrations should be. Yes. On a day when every other Kenyan felt patriotic enough to fight for independence all over again, these fellows in Embu thought it was a good idea to express their displeasure by interrupting the celebrations. It was a good thing though, because we got to see what the governor looks like outside of a courtroom. It almost sounds like he's reminding himself what he does for a living. But you know, those hooligans learned this interruption of business from somewhere, right? The MCAs, yes, the MCAs are back and we here on Mock the Week could not be happier because once again, they decided to showcase their maturity at debates. <laughs> Just when we thought these magnificent politicians had finally decided to get to work. Don't tell us the reports, we don't want to hear. Whatever that is that they do. They once again reminded us what really is important to them. We are always told that we are a replicant of parliament. Mweshimiwa Mbunge, Mweshimiwa Senator, President Hawezipe Wakagurand, na sisi ambayo tunafanya, mambo ya, tunafanya the same job, we are denied. Calm down, Mr. President. These fellows have a point. Didn't I hear that we are now growing money on trees? Money, money. Another thing, the similarities between MCAs and MPs are more than we want to accept. For example, but before we got to that, let me explain how we got here. This guy sent this guys a draft bill on security and said, go ye and pass. Small problem. Not everyone was in the mood to comply, so they started talking loudly. We would also be very w foolish if you hear there's a snake in your house and you light fire in the house with your children and all your relatives in the house. What am I saying? Honorable Speaker, we must rise to the occasion. When the talking became tedious, they did what came to them naturally. <laughs> Thank you so much, MCAs and MPs. Thank you for showing Kenyans that instead of using words to solve problems, it's okay to use your fists. That's a great example to set as leaders. Well done, well done, well done. In fact, we are so happy for you. This is the reaction in our hearts right now. Speaking of happiness... Former Stare MP Margaret Wanjiro decided that the orange in the orange party had become too sour or had been attacked by too many maggots. Either way, she decided that the dove was more likely to offer some much needed peace. Mr. Governor, you are more concerned about developing Nyanza than developing Nairobi. And the moral of the story is, MCAs and MPs, you really need to grow up. 
This is Jerry Wujura reporting for Mock the Week. Let's wait and see what the Kenyan team will do at the Wellington Sevens where they've been pulled against Argentina, Scotland and Samoa. Now moving on. As many as already anticipated, the Sekafa Senior Challenge Cup will not be staged this year. The organizers of the event finally broke their silence on after months of uh, after months rather where the host had pulled out. However, the regional body wants to ensure that they, that they curb this eventuality in the near future. Yes, said uh, we are looking at the format from next year. We are, the technical committee of SACAFA will have a meeting and when we meet the presidents very soon, we will come up with a format that will change the format we are going to use for Challenge Cup next year. SACAFA stands with the president of FIFA to support him unanimously in his bid for re-election next year. Uh, and uh, moving on, Elgeo Manakwet County residents will uh, had. a uh, rather had a, an entertaining spree as they experienced motor vehicle drivers rest at the Ramoy National Service. The event saw drivers uh, test their navigation skills through the deep gullies, hills, trees, and, other, and uh, rather others got stuck in the mud through the riverbeds as they mingled with the wildlife at the expansive uh, race. The race was uh, great to see that uh, they promote wildlife protection and address the poaching issue. Now moving on, organizers of the annual Kisumu Marathon will from next year make changes to the starting time of the race so as to ensure athletes not burn in the scorching sun in Kisumu. Delek Omari from Nyamira won the men's race in a time of 2 hours, 14 minutes and 3 seconds, while Rebecca Chipchirchir won the women's equivalent in a time of 2 hours, 41 minutes. Victor Gale files that report. The usual busy streets of Kisumu City Sunday morning had unusual guests in the name of athletes who were in for the 200,000 shillings prize money for the first man and woman to cross the finish line at the Kisumu sports grounds. The 42 kilometer race saw athletes go around the Lakeside City several times with the leading pack of the men's race comprising of the cream de la cream in the start list, including long distance ace Julius Kiplimo Korir. With six kilometers to the finish line, for Master and Madoka Half Marathon champion Dikla Komari from Nyamira County crossed the tape in a time of two hours, 14 minutes, three seconds ahead of Samson Ball, who was second with Julius Kilimo coming in third. <laughs> The women's race saw Rebecca Chepchirchir bag the honors in a time of 2 hours 41 minutes ahead of Nancy Jabet. This athlete by the name of James Kanali Kagoni claimed to have finished in third place but race officials were quick to accuse him of cheating as his bib number had not appeared in most sections of the race. So if, if he didn't pass through one of the, 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 the stations, then definitely you are cheating. It is a race that over the years has continued to grow and develop athletic talent here in Nyanza. And according to the organizers, this year's event registered a huge turnout compared to last edition. Victor Ogale, KTN, in the county of Kisumu. 
Marines were crowned champions of uh, the inaugural 2014 Malindi Beach Rugby after beating Pirates 4-3 at the Ocean Beach in Malindi. And in matters of cricket, the Maasai Warriors treated Raraka Sports Club to rare fate as they faced off in a friendly match. That and more in our today's sports wrap. After stunning the world through their prowess in cricket, the Laikipia-based Warriors team were today testing their skill against a more experienced Waraka side. Despite losing 181 to 160 in 20 overs, the Warriors believe they have what it takes to compete with the best in the Kenyan league. Their hopes now rest on more exposure and training to become world beaters. It took part of training, then uh, to Neza join the league of Kenya to go and support. Like at the moment, Malenye to go and I couldn't hire any other teams around uh, the other teams to travel is very far. So to join the leagues, then it was Nzuri Sana. Masai, while I'm a chess and Nzuri, but only how I want to experience Nzuri. Otherwise, how I want to go to Kabisa, Kocheza and Sisi to Mefrai, Kocheza and the Maasai Warriors' last outing was in England, where they took part in the last man standing tie, winning two matches. Elsewhere, Marine had a tough opening as they had to come from behind to thrash the visitors 5 2 in the main cup final of the Malindi Beach Rugby. Marines took home 150,000 Kenyan shillings with their trophy, while Pirates got 70,000 Kenyan shillings. Pwani Shark settled for third position after easing comfortably past Watamu Rugby with a 3 0 win. Malindi 2 narrowly edged Malindi 1 to a 4-3 win to lift the plate, while Bungoma settled for the ball trophy after breezing past tighter shocks with a 5-2 win. Robinson Okenye, KTN Sports. To matters of Polo now. A last-minute goal by Rachel Robley secured Nume a 4-3 win over Stubborn Sanyati to, claim the, to clean the Christmas Polo Christmas Championship for the second time consecutively. This time round... Uh, Ndume started on a low note as Mbugingugi shot Sanyati into the lead. Sanyati's lead did not, however, last as Archie was leveled for the Ndume before Ngugi doubled the lead. Ndume, who comprised of Archie, Rachi Robling, Gideon Moy, and Megan Griffiths, were in a class of their own to were in a class of their own, uh, rather, utilizing every chance that came their way, hence resulting in Megan netting a third goal. Seconds before the final whistle, Robling netted the fourth goal to award Ndume the title. All right, lots of feedback coming in on the hashtag checkpoint on the discussion on the security laws amendment bill. Let me just read a few of them. Leo Kinuthia says, I pay taxes, but I also know that I have a certain level of responsibility to keep my location safe. Um, at M, Mr. Oboge says, to kill free speech is to insult human rights, to stifle human nature, and to suppress truth. He's, uh, he's quoting someone there. And uh, Patti Rutich says, first, let's get rid of corruption, and we'll see if we really, that we really do not need this bill. And finally, Ray Gita, he says, terrorists are enemy combatants who, because of being civilians, have constitutional rights, and he poses a question. But should they? And that really is at the heart of um, the debate here in terms of uh, security uh, of the security laws amendment bill. What are the rights of the accused? What are the rights of the public with respect to uh, safeguarding security in our country? This, of course, is going to be a debate that carries over until that law is either passed or rejected um, in this coming week. And we will we will be keeping you updated on the debate with regard to the security amendments law, uh, as well as bringing other people on to share their opinions about whether we are are going in the right direction or we are taking a step backwards as some people have suggested but that's it for KTN weekend prime tonight thank you very much for joining me this evening I'm John Alanamu have a good night